Welcome back to Tangent Talk. I'm your host Richard Davis and we're going to talk about the derivative again. Uh, in section 2.7 we were talking about the derivative at a point f prime of a. In 2.8 though we're going to talk about the derivative function f prime of x. How to graph it, how it relates to the graph of f of x. And then in part two we're going to look at what's called differentiability. Uh, that's whether or not the derivative even exists, what, it, what that means, and how differentiability relates to continuity. All right, let's start with this one. This is, this is a, a review, actually. We know how to find the derivative at x equal a. Remember, we, uh, we uh, look at the difference quotient from f of a to a plus h minus f of a over h. And then plug in what the function is, f of a plus h here, f of a here. Remember what happens here? You, you carefully multiply it out. Be really cautious with this negative sign here. And then w once you multiply everything out, the um, anything that doesn't have an h in it is going to cancel on the top. Leaving you with some terms that have an h in it on top. I know I'm going quickly here. Uh, and you can factor out the h and cancel it. So when you, when you simplify the difference quotient, you get um, 2 minus a minus 1 half h. So the derivative at a, the slope of the tangent line at a, is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 minus a minus 1 half h. You're thinking of a as a constant here, so the only thing that, that changes is that this, this term right here, this goes to 0. So the derivative at a, the slope of the tangent line at a, is 2 minus a. So what we're going to talk about today is, okay, well what would the derivative at x be? What would f prime of x be? And it turns out, you shouldn't be too surprised if I told you, the derivative of x is 2 minus x. So what, what's the difference between the derivative of a and the derivative of x? Well, it's really a matter of perspective. See, when you talk about the derivative of x, you're talking about this is a function of x. You're talking about the graph. And you're, you're saying, what, is, what does this function look like as x varies? Whereas when you're talking about the derivative of a, you're generally talking about the slope of the tangent line at one specific fixed point, x equal a. Okay, so it's kind of a subtle difference there. Anyway, there's some notation I want to talk about. Uh, f prime of x is also written as y prime. It's also written as dy dx. It's also written as the derivative with respect to x of y. It's also written as the derivative with respect to x of f of x or dx of f of x. And going back here to f of f prime of a for just a second, you could also think of f prime of a as y prime of a. You see that sometimes. Uh, you, you see this a lot too. dy dx evaluated at x equal a. That's pretty common. So get used to different ways of writing of writing the derivative. Okay, I want to look at the relationship here between the graph of the function f of x um, that we just looked at and the derivative function which is 2 minus x. You should notice here f of x is a quadratic function and f prime of x is a linear function. Okay. Uh, more importantly at this point though, we're, if we, as we look at the graph here, you'll notice some relationships here. What is the slope of the tangent line there? What is the y-coordinate there? The slope of the tangent line will always be the y-coordinate of the derivative function, right? Wherever the, if the slope of the tangent line at 0 is about 2, that'll be the y-coordinate of the derivative function. If the slope of the tangent line is about 1 here at x equal 1, um, then that'll be the y-coordinate of the derivative function. If the slope of the tangent line is about negative 1 here at x equal 3, that'll be the y-coordinate of the derivative function, and so on. Slope of the tangent line looks like about negative 2. That's the y-coordinate of the derivative. Let me say that one more time. The slope of the tangent line at a point on f of x is the y-coordinate of the point on f prime of x. Okay? Anyway, let me, let me do this one. Here's the kind of thing you might do on a homework problem. Given a function, y equals 2 over x plus 1, and you want to find dy dx. That just says the derivative. Derivative of y with respect to x. And so the way you would do it is exactly like we were doing it in 2.7. Uh, with the difference quotient, notice instead of f of a plus h minus f of a over h, I have f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The good old difference quotient. So this is f of x plus h, this is f of x. The LCD is going to be x plus h plus 1 times x plus 1. 
So that therefore you have to multiply this on top and bottom by x plus 1, multiply this on top and bottom by x plus h plus 1, right? So you do that and also remember that when you divide by h you multiply by the reciprocal. Alright, so you simplify, multiply it out, simplify, combine everything on the top. You'll have a term that has an h in it, you can cancel the h. So when you find f prime of x, you uh, take the limit as h goes to 0. Notice this factor here, as h gets close to 0, it gets close to x plus 1, so you end up with x plus 1 squared on the bottom. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, now is, I want to graph the derivative function. Re re remember what I was talking about before. The uh, slope of the tangent line uh, on the graph of f of x will be the y-coordinate on the graph of f prime. So here's the graph of f of x. So let's just um, ap approximate some slopes of tangent lines. Notice the slope of the tangent line at 1 looks like 0, so we know that the derivative has an x-intercept there. Uh, at 0, it looks like the uh, slope is about 1 and a half, let's say, so the y-coordinate of the derivative function will be about 1 and a half. At negative 1, looks like the slope's about, I don't know, 2 and a half, maybe? So the derivative will have a y-coordinate 2 and a half. If we go to the right now, at 2, it looks like the, the slope is about, I don't know, negative 1 and a half. And at 3, it looks like the slope's about, I don't know, about negative 3. So if you connect those points, you get, you get an approximation, at least, to the derivative function. Lo and behold, at f of x was a quadratic function. The derivative function looks like a um, linear function. I wonder if there's a pattern here, huh? Anyway, let's look at another one. This looks like it might be what type of function? Perhaps a third degree polynomial? Uh, anyway, so my advice on graphing the derivative would be to find out where the tangent line is zero first. Those are going to be your x-intercepts. And then just plot some other, other points. Let's see, at zero, when x is zero, doesn't the derivative look like about, I don't know, negative one point something maybe? Looks like about negative one point something. Um, at x equal 1, it looks like it's about maybe negative a half. At x equal 2, looks like it will be about, um, I don't know, about 1 almost. Almost 1. At x equal 3, looks like it's about, um, it's about 4, I think. Anyway, at x equal negative 1, the slope looks about negative 1. We already have it here. How about at negative 3? It looks like the slope's about positive 4 also. So anyway, if you were to connect these points, you get, believe it or not, quadratic function. Interesting, huh? Anyway, we're just getting a rough idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's look at this one. This is an in interesting function. The good old absolute value function. Uh, it's pretty easy to graph the derivative, actually. Isn't it true for any x value to the right? Isn't this like at 1? Isn't the slope of, the, slope of that tangent line 1? Same is true at 2. So the, the slope of the tangent line is always 1 as if x is greater than 0. So the graph looks kind of like this. If x is greater than 0, the derivative function is going to always be 1. Now, furthermore, if x is negative, like negative 1, negative 2, notice the slope of that tangent line is always negative 1. So the derivative is always going to be negative 1 when x is uh, less than 0. So what happens at 0? It turns out f prime of 0 is undefined and we'll talk more about that uh, in part b. We, we say f is not differentiable at 0. Anyway, we're going to come back to that more. Let's do one more here. Uh, what, what kind of function does that look like to you? Could be a um, trig function maybe? So let's, let's graph it by finding out where the derivative is 0. Those are your x-intercepts of the derivative. Here, let's just plot some points. Like at 0, looks like it's about, I don't know, what do you think? About 1, maybe a little bit more than 1. At 1, it looks like it's about not very much. It's almost 0, isn't it? Uh, 2, we, ha we have it about negative something. Uh, negative 1 half, maybe. 3, it's about almost negative 1 or so. That's like a little bit steeper down here, more than negative 1. If we go to the left, though, the slope here looks like about 1, doesn't it? Uh, we know it crosses here, so the slope here is about a half. At negative 3, the slope's about, I don't know, what do you think there, folks? Negative half? Anyway, if you were to connect these dots, you get a graph looking like this. Hmm, that's interesting. It looks like if the function's a trig function, the derivative, a sine or a cosine function, then the, so is the derivative. we got to go. Bye.